Hi there, my name is Dr. Gretchen, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist at The Missing Link. Today, I want to talk about neuroplasticity and the most common questions that I am asked. For some people, neuroplasticity seems too good to be true because it's the reason that people with multiple sclerosis can actually improve your walking, your strength, and your balance regardless of where you're currently at. But I often receive questions like, how does that work? How long does it take to work? How do I get it to work? So that's what I'm going to review with you today. And let's start off by going into a bit further of an explanation of what it is. So as I just mentioned, it's the reason that people with MS can improve any area of function, strength, balance, walking, you name it. How does this happen? The way that this happens is one of two options. Option one is it's the ability of our brain to strengthen neural pathways that already exist. Meaning we have neural pathways starting in our brain that travel all the way down our spinal cord and to every muscle in our body. Now for you, some of those neural pathways are working. They are still there, but with the demyelination that has been occurring, they might be very weak and therefore not working in the best way or maybe not working at all. So in that case, Neuroplasticity is the ability to strengthen those neural pathways that you already have. They're just weaker. Option two is that neuroplasticity can rewire itself. So if your neural pathways are not working at all, your brain can find a new way, a new neural pathway to get from point A being your brain to point B being a muscle. So regardless of where you're at right now, if your neural pathways are working, they're just weak, or if they're not working at all, it's still possible for you. One way that you can know if your muscles and neural pathways are working or not working is by testing each one out. For example, if you have difficulty lifting your leg up, then on both sides separately, Attempt to lift one leg up. When you attempt to lift it up, does it move? Even if it's just a little bit, does it move or not? If it moves even just the tiniest bit, that means that your neural pathways are there and they're working. They've just been weakened so much that it, they're not working as much as what you need to lift your leg to its fullest potential. However, if you go to lift your leg and the leg doesn't lift at all, that might be a sign that your current neural pathways are not working at all. And therefore your brain needs to rewire itself. It needs to find a new way to get from point A to point B being your muscle. The second question that I am often asked is, does this occur for people in multiple sclerosis? Because if we're being honest, neuroplasticity occurs in everyone, especially babies. Babies use neuroplasticity as they get older to learn how to walk and how to talk. And there was this thought many, many years ago that neuroplasticity only, occur, only occurred in healthy individuals. But Newer research over the last 10 plus years is showing that that's not true, that it does occur in anyone, including people who have multiple sclerosis. Which leads me to the third question that I am often asked, which is, does this occur regardless of my age? So the answer is twofold. Yes, it does occur for everyone, regardless of how old you are. However, as we age, it takes longer. So the older we get, the longer it can take for neuroplasticity to work for us, which leads me to my fourth question that I receive all the time, which is how long is this going to take? I, I understand that I can improve, but how long do I need to stay consistent in order to actually reap the benefits of neuroplasticity? And this is different for every person, as you may imagine, that's the case for a lot of things in multiple sclerosis. But on average, I can say that if you are someone who has the neural pathways 
We're just trying to strengthen them, meaning your neural pathways are there. When you go to lift your leg or lift your foot, whatever movement it is, you go to do that movement and it does move even just a little bit, neuroplasticity doesn't take as long. It can take anywhere from a few months to maybe nine months for you to see some type of improvement. Not a drastic, huge improvement, but some improvement that can keep you motivated to keep going. If you are in the category where you went to lift your leg and it didn't lift at all, and therefore you're in the um, option of neuroplasticity rewiring itself, as you can imagine, that takes longer. So that type of neuroplasticity often takes anywhere from about nine months of staying consistent all the way up to about two years of staying consistent. So regardless of what group you're in, if you're strengthening your neural pathways or rewiring, it can take a while. It takes consistency, which leads me to the fifth question that I am asked frequently, and that is, what do I do to get this to work? How do I get this to work? So we know that it works. We know how long it takes, who it works for, but you have to know what exercises to do in order to reap the benefits of neuroplasticity because not all exercise is created equal. Each exercise is different. And when it comes to neuroplasticity, there are a few parameters that are really important for you to implement. First and foremost, your exercises must be functional, meaning if you have a goal of standing up from low surfaces with better strength and better balance, then practicing standing is going to be really important for you, the physical act of standing up. If it's too challenging, make it easier. So maybe you're standing up from a higher surface. Or if, you're, if you want to improve your walking, there's so many exercises that you could do to improve your walking, but just pick one or maybe two or three, however many you can do consistently. So pick that amount. And once you have that, then you're going to do each one as many repetitions as you can with good quality. So for walking, let's just say marching and bending your knee. Those are two movements that you have to do when you're walking. So as you're taking a step forward, you have to be able to bend your knee and you have to be able to lift your leg. So whether you're practicing marching or bending your knee or standing up, once you have the functional exercise or multiple functional exercises, you want to shoot for high repetitions. The more repetitions you do, the more opportunities your brain has to find or strengthen those neural pathways. Think about it this way. If you practice five repetitions of the marching exercise, then that day your brain tried five times to find a new neural pathway or to strengthen your current neural pathway. And if someone else attempted 20 times that day, maybe they did one set of 10 repetitions in the morning and then one set of 10 repetitions in the afternoon. Their brain tried 20 times to find or strengthen the new neural pathway. And maybe someone else did 50 repetitions. Maybe they did 10 in the morning, maybe five later in the morning, eight later on, and they're splitting it up throughout the day. But cumulatively, they did 50 repetitions. Well, that person had a brain that tried 50 times to strengthen or find a new neural pathway that day. As you're probably putting two and two together right now, the more repetitions cumulatively that you do, the more opportunities you have for neuroplasticity. So making sure the exercise is functional, and then once you have those functional exercises, making sure you're doing as many repetitions as possible cumulatively. This does not mean that you need to do 50 repetitions all at once, or that you need to do 10 repetitions for five sets all in one sitting. Take breaks. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. The third thing that's really important is that you have good quality. You don't just want to shoot for as many repetitions as you can, but half of them are with poor quality. Because if you have poor quality, you're still going to get neuroplasticity, but you're instead training your brain to 
improve the neural pathways for poor quality, which we don't want because that often can result in things like falls or something that would put your safety at risk. So with those exercises, make sure that you have good quality. Oftentimes that just means more rest breaks and it means being okay with not completing a set of 10 repetitions. Maybe you complete a set of six repetitions or five repetitions or even four repetitions. The fifth thing that you can do to get neuroplasticity working is to have focused attention. When you're doing your exercises, you have focused attention on what you're doing. You're doing your marching exercise while thinking about how high is my leg lifting? Where am I feeling my muscles working? You're not thinking about what you're gonna eat for dinner tonight or what you're gonna make for breakfast tomorrow or if you're gonna shower today. You're not thinking about those other thoughts. You have focused attention on the specific movement and muscle and action that you're doing. Research shows that these three things are highly important in getting neuroplasticity to work. So make sure your exercise is functional. Make sure you're shooting for high repetitions of good quality movement and make sure that your attention is focused on the specific body part, on the specific activity and exercise that you're doing. I hope this inspires you. And if you forgot what neuroplasticity is, or maybe you've never heard of it before, I hope you now fully understand what it is and how it works and that it is possible for you. So take these steps, take this education and start implementing with your exercises. And as always, if you're looking for MS specific exercises that coincide with neuroplasticity, check out my exercises in my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link.